Hello and welcome to the episode 192 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Some of the stories of today's show include a live TV appearance, a wedding, and heavy studio work. On the 19th of July 1962, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Another concert one year later, in 1963. Now sporting Ringo Starr on drums, the lads were engaged at the Winter Gardens in Margate for the fourth of six consecutive nights. As usual for this residency, they performed two gigs for the evening. In 1964, the Fab Four left Liverpool at 1.30 am, arriving in London at 3 am. After a few hours of sleep to recover from yesterday's madness and the northern premiere of their first feature film, A Hard Day's Night, the lads regrouped at the Teddington Studio Centre in Teddington. Starting at 1.45 pm, the band was busy with rehearsals for their live appearance on ABC Television's Lucky Star Summer Spin. Usually, band appearances on the show were filmed six days in advance, but a strike of ITV technicians forced the production to abort any plan for pre-taping the show. The Beatles went live between 5.50 and 6.35 pm, miming performances for A Hard Day's Night, Long Tall Sally, Things We Said Today, and You Can't Do That. Four years later, in 1968, John Lennon served as best man at Alexis Mardas's wedding. Mardas, nicknamed Magic Alex, was the head of Apple Core Electronics Department. Donovan was the other best man for Mardas, and George Harrison, Patty Harrison, and Yoko Ono were in attendance at the ceremony. The wedding didn't stop the Beatles, though. Between 4 pm and 3.45 am, the whole band continued working on Revolution, with Take 15 deemed best by John Lennon and Obladi oh Oblada. Oh Session player Nick Hopkins received £6.10, shillings, about £113 in 2020 money, to record an electric piano track on Revolution, while Rex Morris, Ronnie Scott, and a third unknown saxophonist recorded sax part onto Obladi oh Oblada. Oh After some reduction mixes, Paul McCartney recorded the bass part for Revolution, which was eventually scrapped, and double-tracked his existing bass part on Obladi oh Oblada, oh as the original had become too inaudible after the various mix-downs. The session was concluded with a rough mono mix of this latter piece. Before moving on to the last section of today's podcast, let me ask you to check out the other episodes, if you like this one. I know, it's a lot of stuff, but it's also the most comprehensive podcast about the history of the Beatles out there. And, as usual, if you fancy making the production of this and other music-related content easier, you can do worse than checking out www.simonmas.com support and see what you can do. The link is in the episode description. Thank you. On the 11th of July 1969, between 2.30 pm and midnight, the Beatles were again at the EMI Studios, completing their work on Maxwell's Silver Hammer, with one more guitar of a dub by George Harrison and more vocals on the final line of the song by Paul McCartney. After that, something was enriched with George's lead vocal, double-tracked for the choruses. Finally, after some reduction mixes, during which something was edited down to 5 minutes and 32 seconds, You Never Give Me Your Money received the bass part. That concluded the session. And that concludes our episode 2. In thanking you again for any support you might want to give me, I will remind you that tomorrow we'll talk about the Ivor Novello Awards. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.